What's the bowl for? Tepid water. Tepid water. I don't know what tepid water is. It's slightly warmer than anything. Okay. Warmish, not hot. Who wrote that? Um, that book is the joy of cooking. Uh, oh. Irma Rombauer and Marion and Ethan Becker. Is it quite popular? Yeah. Very well known among chefs. How long? 15 seconds. Oh, just... Lies. Please. You mean a minute? You gotta turn it off. Uh. Can you, uh... Okay. So we need to add some sugar to the pizza dough. Um, one to help the yeast start chomping down and getting gassy, and two to make our dough taste better. So the book says about a tablespoon, but we're gonna do a little bit less than that. And we're gonna let it dissolve in the water. And then we're going to add the yeast, which is two and a quarter teaspoons. So we get two teaspoons, ready to go. Set that in the water. Two teaspoons. And we're gonna need another quarter. Baby teaspoon. Baby teaspoon. And we'll just let that start to bubble and foam, and in the meantime, we're going to mix the salt and flour mixture together. Oh, salt and flour mixture. And that guy. Cut. Okay, so now we are making our flour mixture. It says to use all-purpose flour, but we're actually going to use a bread flour recipe. It turns out a little better for me. So we need three and a half cups, and you don't really have to sift it. Um, using volumetric measurements, but you should do it by weight if you have a good by weight recipe. One, two, there's three, and then we need a little bit more. And because we were a little heavy on the water, the final quarter that is optional in our recipe. I see. On which flour? And to this we're going to add one and a teaspoon, one tablespoon of salt. Our handy dandy slide. That's a really cool slide. One tablespoon, yep. This is a uh, kosher salt now. Kosher salt. Yep. started, get our hands in the flour, and make a mess all over the kitchen. Oh. And we'll stir it around with a fork. This way we can more evenly distribute the salt before we start mixing it in. And if we put it in with the yeast, it's going to slow down the process of blooming the yeast. Once the yeast is done blooming, which you can see it's on its way, trying not to disturb it too much, I have to actually give it a little bit of activity in here. And make sure all that sugar is dissolved. Give it another couple minutes. It's not quite 
there yet. And then once we're done with that, we'll mix the two together, and then we'll have to cut. So what's, so what's going on right now? Right now, the yeast is definitely getting a bite out of that sugar, mixing with the hot water and it's digesting and producing gas and that's exactly what we want for our bread so now that it's starting to bloom we're pretty much going to be ready to start mixing the water into the flour mixture from that point we'll have dough beautiful well so now we have to mix the flour into the water okay. a little bit at a time so i just needed to hold it over the water and then tilt it forward there's the flour. Here's the water. So if you could just lean it as if you're about to pour it, but don't pour it. Okay, like that, like so. Yep, and I'll just scoop a little bit in at first. Mix it in. Add a little bit at a time. You can progressively add more and more as you go. Making sure to mix in entirely, otherwise you get big globs of, of dry flour surrounded by sticky gluten. Now is uh, gluten, they say gluten, the people hate gluten, people say it's bad for you. Um, as far as I know, there's nothing wrong with gluten. Um, some people have allergies to gluten, which can potentially be hypersensitive and lethal. So you've got to be careful if you have a gluten-free person around, you uh, should take care of their needs. You have to wash everything, top and bottom, and you've got to get every little last bit of flour out of the room. Flour, and that's what contains gluten. Uh, actually, lots of starches can contain gluten. In fact, that's the starchy bit, the part that makes them sticky, is gluten. So it's not just flour, but um, there's lots of alternatives. There's potato and rice flours, uh, which can be mixed in combination with a few other ingredients All to way? produce a very flour-like substance. Okay. Not just yet. Okay, so we're starting to see the dough come together. We went past the pancake batter phase. Mm -hmm. Right, looks a lot. And now we're at the part where the fork is starting to struggle. Mm -hmm. and we still have a good bit of flour left. Thanks. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Can you see the flour is starting to? Bit, if you could dump it out on the table. Dump it out on the table? Yep. Dump it out. I'm going to take a dump. It's about a quarter cup, the last quarter cup. We're going to save it. Uh, we don't want the dough to take up too much flour right away because we don't want it to be too crumbly if we added too much flour. So this is the consistency that we're achieving. We're getting to a point where the fork doesn't even help us. So now what we'll do is we'll take this flour that we put out on our table, mm -hmm. scatter it a bit, and push some of it off to the side even because we won't even use all of it. Put our dough right out in the middle. And we'll start bringing it together. So just squeezing it together, trying to make sure that it can stay in one ball. Mm -hmm. And we'll just gently knead it before we really go to town on it. Because right now it's just too delicate. And then grab some of the flour off from the sides and work it in. And now we're just massaging the dough. And now 
you can see that it's pretty much all in one big glob. Mm -hmm. Now we can just bring it in as much flour as we need. Okay. And we don't have to worry about it getting clumped, clumped up because it's already one big ball. Now the parts that are a little bit too moist will pick up the flour. And parts that are too dry will be fine. Now is this going to create, how much pizza does this make? This makes about four 10 to 12 inch pizzas. Okay. Is that enough for like three people you think? Three hungry guys like us? Probably not. You might have to make two. I see. But I've definitely made this dough before and just eaten one pizza, loaded it with toppings, then taken the dough pressed them out, or made them into balls. Stick them in the fridge. Uh, if I'm going to keep them for a long time, I'll actually just flatten them out, put them in the refrigerator for a little while just to cool them down, and then move them to the freezer, where they can sit there for three days to a week, maybe longer. So now we have our complete dough ball, uh -huh. and it's definitely at the consistency we want as far as the flour and water mixture, but we need to keep kneading it so that it has the right elasticity. You can see when we pull it now, it's just kind of sticky and, and nasty. Mm -hmm. We need to keep working it a little bit so it's at least a little bit tougher. But it's pretty close to where it's going to be. Okay, so we've both taken a turn kneading this dough, and you can see that it's smooth, round. When you pull it, it stretches nicely like that. And the goal of uh, kneading it is to try to get some... The accurate elasticity. Accurate elasticity, because you when you work it, yeah. So, one good measurement besides stretching is to push your thumb into it and see if it bounces back. And it looks like it's coming back pretty quick. So if we work it any harder, it's probably going to start giving out on us. So we're going to form it into a ball by turning our fingertips into it. Okay. And just starting to stretch the crown there and mm -hmm. going to pinch it like this. To make a mushroom. Tuck it in. Yep. We're just going to kind of make this mushroom just until it starts to, to tear like that. And to make that seem a little flatter, we're going to throw it down on the counter. Now we have a dough ball. Now before this is ready to cook, we're going to have to let it rise. And then we're going to punch it down, flatten it out, and shape it into a pizza. Uh, so before we let it rise, we need to take a little bit of olive oil, put it in this bowl uh -huh. so it doesn't stick, give it some flavor. So we'll mix it around, use your hands. Get messy. We're going to put it in upside down, give it a stir, flip it, and there it'll sit for, I think it's about an hour, an hour and a half, until it's about doubled in volume. Oh, hour and a half of this. Yep. And we'll come back. We'll come back. Tell me one cup. Before we put this away for good, we're going to have to make it a little more suitable environment for the yeast to grow and expand this dough. So, best things we can do is give it some warmth and some moisture. So we got some paper towels here. We're just going to dampen them pretty heavily, rinse them out just a little bit so that they can be strong enough to stay on here. And that'll keep the moisture in. In the meantime, we'll move this over to the oven. Mm -hmm. Set it on top. Doesn't need to go in. We just need to preheat the oven, and the warmth from the oven will help this rise much faster. So we'll set it to bake, 475. And usually when you bake a pizza, you just bake it hot and very fast. And one last step. Mm -hmm. 
is before. So when we come back, we're going to want to just roll these out, build them, and just be ready to go with them. So we'll get everything started in the meantime. First thing we can do is load up our pizza trays with some cornmeal. Keeps them from sticking, gives a nice flavor to the crust. You can be generous with it. The extra will just fall off. And this is stone ground yellow cornmeal. Okay. When it's like you could do make this thing or you could not make this thing, just make it. It'll be so much better that way. Are you funny? I think dish advice is very interesting because oh. I always try to avoid making as many dishes as possible. That is the bachelor mindset, but it is not the chef mindset. Of course, then professional and paid chefs also have other people to do the dishes for them. So, so attempt to reduce your dish usage. Go for it. But cuts down on water. It's good for the environment too. But don't. That shouldn't be a focus of of your cooking. Yeah, don't let it stop you from making delicious food. Understood. So here is our new dough, which is about doubled in volume, nice and warm from the oven, which has been going to town. So what we need to do is punch this down and get ready to roll it out. But before we roll it out, we're just going to make it, split it into a few balls so that it'll be ready. And then we'll hit our toppings and then we'll roll it out and hit it with the toppings later. So to get started, turn it out. And it's a little bit of oil from the bowl, that's okay. We just need to punch it down. Pushing all the air out of this. Um. Baker's, uh, Baker's knife is a little better for splitting these things, but normal knife works just fine. Now, if you wanted a really big pizza, you could just take a half of that ball. And if you wanted a giant... Four different dough balls ready to roll out for our pizza. Mm -hmm. uh, now it's time to prep some ingredients. So we're going to make some mushrooms and then we're going to add some pepperoni and some different kinds of cheeses. So for our mushrooms, we're going to use uh, a little bit of butter. And we have about that much mushrooms. So we don't have a lot of mushrooms. We won't need a lot of butter. Maybe half a tablespoon. And that's going to be in a 
medium, medium high pan. And you don't want to crowd the pan with mushrooms. I have plenty of space. And then we're going to season it with thyme, which is an earthy seasoning. It's perfect for mushrooms and some chili pepper. Mushrooms love chilies. And while that pan's heating up, we're going to get some other things ready over here. First, we want some garlic with our mushrooms also. So I'm just taking a clove, going to bash it to get the skin off. And I'm just going to finally dice it. so there's not too many huge chunks. And that'll go right on top of the butter. Save the other piece for the pizza crust. We have some more ingredients over here that we're going to be using. Some fresh Mozzarella. You can get this even fresher if you go to a farmer's market. It'll come in a little pack of water, and that'll be the sweetest and richest kind you can ever have. But this kind works just fine. So I'm just going to get it open so it's ready when I'm going to go to make a pizza. Let's get some pecorino. Pecorino? Pecorino. What's the name of that? I guess I get that on there. Yeah. This is a fairly frequently used cheese in Italian cooking. Can you see the name? Picorito Romato. Got it. Okay. Ooh. Meh. Mm -hmm. Oh, that cheese is good. Very good. Mm. And we got some pepperoni too. Oh, man. And this looks like some good pepperoni. Oh, yeah. Can I get some of that? Mm. No way. <laughs> oh, mine. Oh, no. <laughs> Is it good? It's delicious. And I hear our garlic starting to sizzle. Oh man. Mmm. I put garlic first. So you can smell that garlic already. Mm. It smells delicious. We're gonna hit it with some thyme. Fresh thyme would be better, dry thyme's okay. Dry thyme's okay. okay. Fresh thyme will spit up at you because it's got moisture in it. When it hits the old hills, it just starts to pop. So now we see all that good seasoning in there. Turn the heat down a little bit, closer to medium. We're just gonna get all our mushrooms in there. Mix them into that butter. Give them plenty of room. Just get them all in here. Spread them out. We're just gonna get these started before we put everything in the oven. They'll keep going in the oven too. Oh, that's, that's a pretty good smell. Mm -hmm. So let's chop up the pepperoni while that sizzles away. And then, once those are ready, then we can work on the dough, because that'll take a little bit too much time and we don't want to get carried away. The nice thing about having your own pepperoni is you can cut it as thin as you want, or as thick as you want. Uh, if you have like a mandolin, you can get it really thin. Isn't that an instrument? That is an instrument. 
and it's also a cooking utensil. It's like an inclined plane with a blade inside of it. Okay. And you get a little hand holder thing with little spikes in it. Stick your vegetables or your meat on it. And run it over. Comes out thin little shapes. And then we're gonna actually grate the pepper. And then we're just going to tear the mozzarella. Always check in on your mushrooms. They seem to be doing pretty good. Chili's starting to come up in the nose now. Can smell it? Oh, um, no. Good cheese. Mm -hmm. It's a bit stronger though, so we got a whole bunch of pizzas. We won't use too much in each pizza. Just take that off and wrap it up later. You can actually feel the oil on this cheese. Cheese has oil? Oh, yeah, it's fat, right? Mm-hmm. Exactly. That's good for now. Then we got some mozzarella. We also need our sauce. Oh, our sauce? What sauce are we using? Lucky us, we already have sauce. But if you want to make your own sauce, the best thing to do is get a can of tomatoes. Mm-hmm. Uh, find them skinless or take the skins off yourself. so they get evenly cooked. Uh, then you can mix in some olive oil. You can add in red wine if you want, which we did in this. We had olive oil, we had garlic, um, basil leaves. You can add, you could even add cilantro. cilantro. You could add parsley, uh, salt and pepper, plenty of salt, tomato sauce. Tomatoes of all kinds love salt. Ordinary spoon. Since it's already cooked, we can cheat a bit. Warm it up in here. You see our mushrooms are getting nice and dark and brown. Oh, that's, those are going to taste good. Turn the heat off, and actually, we're going to pop the mushrooms back in their container. Okay. Cancel that. Oh, one. Leave the pan on real low. Okay. Add our sauce in there. And we can move it up that way. We can get that pepper and thyme, olive oil, and all that mushroom sauce that was in here. We could just simmer it. Okay, so we got the sauce is simmering. We have our cheese grated. We have our pepperoni sliced up. Uh, and now all we have to do is get a dough. And we'll be ready. So we'll grab one of these and we will start to squish it mm -hmm. and we'll just do we'll roll it out until it's uh, workable and then we can try our hand at tossing it okay so always roll away from you turn the dough not the rolling pin just give it a little turn press it out oh you're turning the pin not the yep turn the dough not the pin You don't use the handles to get more leverage, I guess? Uh, no, no, you don't really need to do that. So I'm actually just going to stretch this out a little bit by hand. And you can kind of do this bit. 
however makes sense to you. But I like to just go around the edges and stretch them out like this. Seems to be the best way. That keeps it from getting too thin. Usually you'll find that it gets too thin in the middle. You just, just tug it out and then you can, with your knuckles, not your fingertips, you can kind of go in and jiggle. Just carefully try and stretch it out. Turn it, stretch it out. So it starts to get thin like that. You can almost see through it, you just keep going. That's what you want? Yeah, you want to get it nice and thin so that you can just about see through it, but you don't want it to tear. Okay. If you can help it. So I'm just going around the edges, because that's where it's all clumping up. Uh oh. No, no. Don't want to lose us. And that'll stretch it out more. No. You can do this a little bit earlier than where we are now. No, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. It's going to rip out into something. See, you can just start to see through it. And then, if you want to be fancy, toss it up. Give it a toss and a little flick. And I'm not too good at it, but you get the idea. So there we go, we have a nice pizza crust. And we're going to lay that out on our pan. And we're just going to push into it. Make sure it's nice and flat, and that'll give us little wells for the sauces to to pock it into. Oh, okay. All right. You left that on low heat to, to warm up. Yeah. Oh, that's how you get the sauce nicely warmed up, not in the microwave. Yeah. So we're gonna add a little bit of oil for flavor. Okay. And, you know, most people when they think of pizza, they just think of pizza, just, you know, some sauce, mostly just a big spongy piece of bread with a whole pile of cheese, but it's not really like that in Italy. <laughs> That's where the best pizza in the world comes from, so we're going to do it that way. I see. At this point you can put in extra seasonings and spices and things like that, but we're going to... Smush it, break it in half. We want to get the juice of this garlic clove out of this pizza. So we'll just take this bit, just break it over the crust like that. And that'll flavor the crust. You wouldn't think that it adds a lot of flavor, but you'd be surprised how much flavor it actually does add. Okay, now we're ready for sauce. You just need a couple scoops. Wait, just rubbing it adds flavor? Yep. There's tons of flavor in garlic. So you don't want a lot of sauce, you just want maybe one, two. Two hits, okay. Bring it right out to the edge. And you can see that the sauce that I made with the tin tomatoes has kind of big chunks of tomato here and there. It's got lots of flavor. And the canned tomatoes are actually fresher because they're canned right on the spot as soon as they're picked. The ones you get in the store have been carried for thousands of miles and 
gassed on site to turn them red. Otherwise, they'd be green. Oh. Uh -huh. What's up, Mike? <laughs> Alright, now it's time to add the mozzarella. So we're just going to grab a nice hunk like that. Since we're hungry, we're going to have plenty of mozzarella here. Oh, yeah. I love fresh mozzarella. Hmm. I love fresh mozzarella. I'm just gonna just tear off pieces like oh, that. Yeah. And just hit it in and around everything. Cheese is nice and filling too, right? Because it's a uh, cheese. Yeah, cheese has uh, it's a lot of fat and a lot of protein, so it'll give you. I mean, not everything will fill you up, but fats are high in calories, and that'll do it. Fibers will fill you up. Fibers, ah, fibers, okay. Mm -hmm. We have any fiber in our meal? Uh, yeah, the mushrooms have fiber in them. And then we have carbohydrates and we have some soluble fiber in uh, grains. If you were to use a whole grain pizza, you'd have a lot more fiber. Oh, that, is that why whole grain is good for you? Yep. Yeah, that, and there's also a lot of um, polyunsaturated fats in whole grains. Oh, wow. Which are the ones that you think of when you think about it, like omega-3 that's in uh, olive oil. Add some of our pecorino. <sighs> Just get the pepperonis in there. Tuck them in. Hide them, kind of bury them. So it's a nice surprise when you get it. Mm -hmm. And those will turn into these little cups. Oh, yeah. The little oil that's in the cheese and the pepperoni will pool up in them and make them extremely succulent. What is pepperoni? What is it? Pepperoni is a cured meat. So it's essentially a combination of a bunch of ground cuts of Leave pork. Yeah, right. This one's pork and beef. Uh, and a lot of spices, a lot of salt, a lot of seasonings. And that's just because it's some basically just traditional preservation. You just used a lot of salt and spices mm -hmm. to keep things fresh. So now we want Crush a little salt. bit of salt. Just a pinch. You do it from a high height. From a height to get it distributed evenly. A uh -huh. bit of pepper. Our mushrooms. Kind of get them everywhere. And to finish it off, just another drizzle of olive oil. <sighs> And our oven's preheated. So, to 475. To 475. This is going to need about anywhere from 8 to 15 minutes, depending on where you put it in the oven. Sure. And how big your pizza is, how strong your oven is, and all that. Best thing to do is just to watch it. So, we're going to put it in way up at the top. And that's the best thing you can do if you don't have a stone. It just influences the way the heat carries through it and cooks it a little better that way. You want to pretty much leave your light on when you're making pizza. And uh, check back on it after 8 minutes. So, 8.41, we'll come back. Okay. This is uh, the pizza that I kind of worked on. Actually right. turned out pretty well, probably better than mine. Are we rolling? We're rolling. So let's let's take a peek and see how we're doing. So don't get your face right in the oven just yet. Oh, that looks fantastic! Look at that. Oh yeah, that looks done to me. So really, what you want to do? Looks like it's a little piece of that. Pull it out. Very low on battery. Uh -oh. And then you want to just give it a thump, see if it sounds hollow.
And it does, so we got a perfectly done pizza. Brought to you by... Oh, I can't. Just say stuff. Hi. Hi. Okay. Us. That was it. Okay. Wouldn't you, don't you wish you could be eating that? Oh my god. You could be, if you follow our tutorials on after college cooking. But I can't see. Rolling. Rolling. Alright. What's happening? Oh, we're running. Do you want to pause it for a second? You say, just say roll. Oh, roll camera. Okay.